TOA community, welcome back to the channel. Robert Linkle, trainingtheolderadult.com. Just when I thought they had pulled themselves out of the gutter, <laughs> I find I find this. So, okay, so, so number one, I want to share information and I want to give information that I feel like is actionable and that people can use that's real, okay? So when I do something like this, I don't mean to just dump on these guys because they tried to write something that was decent, but I feel like too, a lot of the times you're, they're spreading information that's actually not all that helpful, okay? So, and I will, I will dive into this a little bit deeper. If you like the content, by the way, please subscribe to the channel, hit that bell, share with friends, family members, those around you, help us grow the channel, I would really appreciate it. All right. So I'm in the middle of doing research for a presentation on split stance training and uh, gate walking, um, gate walking, gate training, split squats, step ups, okay, loaded carries, anything basically where you're splitting your feet. Going through research, I find this video slash article from Silver Sneakers, The Beginner's Guide to Split Squats. And the very first exercise in this, okay, like they, they talk a little bit in the beginning about what it, what it means to be able to split your feet and how that's going to prevent you from falls, etc. The very first exercise is right where I have a big issue, okay? Take a half kneeling position. Well, isn't that so easy to just say that? Like, hey, Grandma, you haven't been on the ground since Nixon was in office, okay? It's been, it's been 30 years since you put a knee on the floor. I just want you to take a three foot step and go down to the kneeling position and then pop back up and we're going to keep working on this. Have you seen someone in their seventies and eighties that is untrained, under muscled, under conditioned that hasn't done anything but walk, sit, poop, walk, sit, poop. Like that's all they've done for the last three or four decades. Have you seen them try to do a split squat and or a lunge and or take a knee? It's impossible. That's not, I mean, they get the first half real good. They can take the knee, right? Gra gravity helps that part really well. What happens then? If their kneecap doesn't break when they smash it on the ground, what happens then? Okay, typically it ends up with them crawling on the ground, trying to find a couch or a chair or something to beach themselves on that they can like roll their bodies up and shimmy over and slide onto and not be stuck on the ground anymore unless you are there to help them come up. Okay, now all jokes aside, this is a serious thing. Someone does go down to a knee, they read this article like, oh, I'm going to practice this. They go down to a knee, they're stuck. So anytime we practice anything with anybody, if they're brand new, if they're experienced, like even with anything that we're introducing that's new, I always want, especially if we're online, I always want another person present with that client or that individual. So if they do get stuck, they've got somebody to, to help them. Okay, so... You can't just take a half kneeling position. That, that doesn't happen. There are 10 steps to train before we get to the half kneeling position. This is so far down the line, it shouldn't even be on this list, okay, to be honest. From there, where do we go to? Now, oh, oh, stand up. Cool. Got the first half. Got down there. Get the stand back up. And then uh, lower down, okay? You want to pause at the top, um, you know, bend your knee halfway, lower all the way down, get back to the starting position, come back up. You can tap the ground or go all the way down and completely rest and get back up and then make it your own. You know, if you're having trouble, hang on to something or hold some weights if you're advanced. So those are the steps. Those are my steps for the beginner's guide to split squats. This is a silver sneakers, older adult program. And their beginner's guide says, just take a big step, go down to a knee, unload, come back up, repeat. Those are the steps to a half kneeling position. That's, those are the steps. I mean, you got the steps right, right? I mean, that's how you perform it, but that's not the guide to how you do it better, okay? Like I said earlier, there are multiple steps to learning how to do this correctly. So I'm not gonna just be a guy that gets on here and complains about this. So I searched a little bit more, a little more recent too. I think that other one was from 2018 or something like that, 2021. Master the move, the reverse lunge. I don't know, uh, let's see, Michaela Young. Michaela, you didn't write that first one, did you? Let me, okay, Brittany Risher. I don't know, I don't know either of these young ladies, but this one, much better, okay? So Michaela, right? Yeah, Michaela, much better job. All right, first one, seated lunge with a squeeze. Bravo, let's go to the seated position and let's practice 
splitting your feet, and attempt to squeeze and engage your muscles and just lift your butt up off the chair like that much and return. Okay, that's a great place to start. I love that. Teach muscular engagement. We call it bite, right? Get the muscles to bite enough to initiate upward movement. What happens if you fail? You're already seated, okay? It doesn't matter if you fail, we're good. You're already seated there. So we could practice just engaging and returning and engaging and returning and then eventually moving through range of motion but always having something to rescue you, basically the chair, to get back down to. Okay, seated lunge with a lift. So this one you are going to completely unload your weight onto the chair and then come up and then they want you to go a squeeze position, squeeze both hands on either side of the front leg, put a weight on your front leg and use the muscle to, uh, of the legs to push up and uh, just an inch off the seat and then re-engage and come up. So now you're actually going through the full range of motion. Okay, you're, you're gonna go from the half kneeling, um, simulated half kneeling position of a split squat on the bench and on a chair and you're gonna come all the way up and then return back down and deload, okay? Now, standing reverse lunges, now we're gonna go from the standing position, you're gonna drop back into a lunge and work the top half, okay, and, and then return to standing. I'm gonna demo all these in just a moment. And then from there, you can actually start to work a little bit more range of motion, start to get a little bit deeper, okay? You can start tapping your foot or lifting the knee, raising the knee, et cetera. And then eventually they talk about adding their arms into this. So I think this is a great progression. That's what I wanted to show you here. Uh, I'm gonna use my bench back on this end. One of the um, other videos that I did we discussed, let me go here, like that. We discussed how to perform the hinge and everybody really liked my demo. So I wanted to be able to put those in here for you. Okay, so here's the first one. I am seated, I'm in a chair on a bench. Benches work great for this, okay? Pivot to one side here. So I'm gonna face up uh, a, a 90 degree angle in my knee, a 90 degree angle in my hip, and then same with my back leg. I'm gonna try, I'll turn here in a minute and do this from a side angle. I'm gonna try to get 90 degrees on this back one as well. And now ideally just from here, right? Oh, I should have shown that other article too. I found a booklet that had like 35 pages of at home strength exercises to help older adults stay capable. And it was pretty solid considering they didn't have a lot of weights. You know, they were saying like, oh, maybe you only have like a set of dumbbells. Here's some things you can do. And so there were basic curls and presses and some other things. But what I really liked was it was like practicing sit to stands, air squats, you know, just squatting in space, not putting your butt down, doing the split squat, the drop step. They had carries, just carry things around the house. And then toe raises is where I was going with this. Where your back foot, you really got to make sure you have enough play in your back toe to give that, um, that break in the halicus joint to keep you capable and able of taking long steps, but also being in, being in balance by that big toe being capable of gripping and reacting on the floor. And so this is a great way to practice that, okay? All right, so I'm in my 90s. And then that first one was just engage and relax. Engage and relax. And so it's like, I'm gonna go do a lunge. Nope, no, I'm not, I'm gonna relax. I'm gonna go do it. Nope, no, I'm, no, I'm not. Okay, now let's lift up and then let's return back. This is step two, let's lift up and come back. What if the client can't do this? They're like, it's too deep, I can't lift up, what do you do? Put a two inch AirX pad underneath here and lift them up and let them start at this height or let them start at this height or let them start at this height. It doesn't matter that you're gonna get to a height. It might be three AirX pads, it might be one. You're gonna get to a height where they can engage, squeeze, lift up an inch and then come back and go seated. Come up an inch, go back and go seated. Which, what I'm doing here, but at whatever height works for them. So we come up an inch and then we relax. And then we come up an inch and then we relax. And then eventually you come all the way up and we come all the way back to unload. Come all the way up, come all the way back and unload. And then from there, we practice the actual drop step. Okay, so, and this can start to get a little deeper. I'll do all these from the side here in just a moment. A little deeper and as they simply keep taking a bigger step, they're naturally gonna start moving down a little further and a little further. And then eventually they can work through some of these ranges where they start going a little deeper. Now ideally, okay, I usually have my ramp over here. I've got it on this side today because I had a bigger group in. Ideally, you could use a ramp to do these same things. You can use boxes, all these progressions, hiking sticks, all of these are great options to assist you in working these different heights, working these different activations, but doing them practically. I think I saw two, maybe three different articles that looked at older adults, those 
Two of them were over 70, one was over 55. And they took them through quant extension, leg press, hamstring curl, gas rock, cab pumps, okay? And none, the individuals that did these exercises all got stronger. Pre-testing, could they do a kneeling lunge to the floor, half kneeling position and getting back up? None of them could. Test, 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 came back, everybody got stronger. Could they do a half kneeling? No, none of them could. Even though they all got stronger, like some of them got like twice as strong as they initially were. They could only do, you know, 30 pounds on the quad extension, they were doing 70 or 80. I mean, they literally doubled, if not more, their strengths. So why couldn't, if they got stronger all around their lower half, why couldn't they perform the split squat, half kneeling position? Because they didn't do the split squat, half kneeling position. That's, that's neuromuscular. Your body has to learn the patterns. It has to learn how to coordinate the muscles to perform the movement, not just get stronger in all the muscles that are needed for the movement, okay? So if we can't do split squats at any level, at different heights, at different activations, with support sticks, with bands, with any, any adjustments, any assistant, right? If you can't do the actual movement, it's gonna be very difficult to eventually do this by supplementing with different machines. Yeah, it's great to get stronger, but is that going to help you long-term, like actually produce what we're looking for? I don't think so, okay? All right, half kneeling, 90s, right? Here's my position, engage, return, engage, return. Now I want an inch, return, I want an inch, return. I'm doing my arms, so you're seeing that I'm turning these muscles on. All the way to standing, all the way back down, all the way to standing, all the way back down, and then eventually I'm going to drop step, lunge, return, excuse me. I'm going to drop step, return, drop step, return. And notice this as I start taking longer drop steps, what happens to my center of mass and my height? It naturally starts going lower because I'm just taking deeper steps, right? And eventually I'm gonna take such a long step that I'm practically in my lunge. So now I can practice from here with weights, I can practice my split squats and we'll do these like one and a quarter or one and a half. So here's a full and a half return, full and a half return. And it looks like you're like bouncing in the middle of it. But what you're teaching that muscle to do is momentum, momentum, return. And you're having to change direction, change direction, come all the way up. Like these variables, different angles of attack, different loads, different tempos, different starting heights, assistance with a stick, assistance with a band, um, isometrics, drop steps, forward step, back step, lateral step, all of these things slowly start to add up and increase your ability to perform the most simple task that you have been overtraining. This is good overtraining for to tear muscle fiber. This is good tearing of the muscle fiber to get your body stronger so you are more neuromuscularly adapted, which means your body now has the pattern sent through the body, the, the, the mental signal has been sent through your body and it says, here's how you do a lunge. Here's how you do a split squat. Here's how you go to a knee and get back up. Your muscles have the strength to perform all that. And now you have the neuromuscular adaptation that has occurred that your body has now learned how to merge those two things together and you can actually do the task, okay? You gotta look at everything in this way, everything in this way of there's three learning domains. Cognitive, that's mentally understanding and knowing what you're doing and why. Psychomotor, physically being able to perform the movements or the progressions in the right order and the right tasks and the right assistance, etc. And then affective learning domain, that's the emotional connection between the two, the whole thing. It's me understanding and trusting that what you told me is the right cognitive information and then what I physically did and am practicing is going to work and get me better. So now I have buy-in, I believe what's going to happen, right? With this, I've got the right tools, I've got the right order, I've got the right practices, I believe it. In that first one, just take a step, go down, get back up. I don't believe that. You didn't actually give me any actionable information. If the article started with, you're an active older adult athlete and you're already fit and you just need to learn how to do a drop step lunge, then here's the right beginner's guide on that. You nailed it. But how many, how many people are we talking about? I mean, that's like four people that they wrote that article for. You know what I'm saying? Like you gotta give people the right tools and then I have to be able to read this and go, I trust this, this is right. 
And then I have to be able to practice those things, to put them together to make it actionable. That's why when I started this whole thing, I'm like, I'm like, I thought you guys were on the right track and now we're right back to this because there's a lot of information. Sadly, there's a lot of information that comes out, not just from this website, but from many, right? Where it's, you're giving information and you're giving out, you're giving out information that is needed, but it's not necessarily the right information. The other example I'll give you drives me nuts. So make sure I don't go too long and bore everybody here. I know I say that in every video. I try to keep them under 20 minutes. Um, whenever they say the best exercise to get you strong, the best exercise you do the rest of your life for strength, the, anything that mentions strength training, not muscular endurance, not endurance, not cardiovascular respiratory training, not metabolic, not high intensity interval, anything that has to do with respiration or endurance. When it says strength and weights aren't included in that, it's the wrong answer. It's the wrong answer. I should say resistance. Okay. You can use bands, cables, pulleys. When I say weights, that's what I mean. External load. Okay. You got to have external load to get stronger because you know what your body's good at? Moving your body. And this is when everybody jumps at me and they go, Rob, I can't do push-ups. If I do 30 push-ups a day and if I do squats, what does all that do? It makes you more muscularly endured, gang. Once you do more than 10, you're into muscular endurance now. Now it's your body's ability to pump oxygenated blood flow to the muscles to keep doing the same load over and over and over. That's muscular endurance. I'm not saying you can't get fit. I'm not saying you can't get strong doing that. And you will to a certain extent, but eventually this becomes more cardiovascular than it does about strength. It's a great beginning place, but in most cases, our older adults can't do a bodyweight squat. They can't do a lunge. They can't do a step up. They definitely can't do a pull up. No way in hell they're doing handstand push ups. They can't do dips. So what are we, gonna, what are we talking about with body weight? You're going to do wall push ups. We're going to do calf pumps. Like, what are we talking about? So how do you get those people stronger? This is why the at-home body weight workouts don't do any good for older pops. They must have load. You have to have external load to create some type of overload that then starts to tear the muscle fiber that makes people stronger, that makes the bones become more dense, that gives the, the tendons and the ligaments a resistance to learn and react to, to learn how to be more tense, to be more stable. It's the whole idea. We talk about, and I hammer the said principle all the time. It's a specific adaptation to an imposed demand. Okay. I grab weights that are really rough. And what does my hands do? They build calluses. That's a specific adaptation. I will put down more skin to an imposed demand. What's the imposed demand? I'm holding on to rough stuff and it moves in my hand over and over and over again. That's why your feet and your shoes have calluses on them. That's why our skin will adapt and protect against the sun by getting tan. Like these are techniques that our body does to adapt to the environment, to adapt to a demand. So when you keep moving incorrectly and you just keep banging your hip into the hip socket over and over and over again, what does it do? It starts to put down bone spurs. It starts to lay down more bone because it thinks you're causing damage. And what are you actually doing? You're creating a cam or a pincer bone spur. And eventually you're going to be in trouble and your hip's going to hurt so bad you can't move it anymore. Okay. That's basically the start of a hip replacement because eventually your labrum is going to start to tear. Next thing you know, your hip hurts so bad you can't move anymore. And are we going to do any of the training we're talking about because of one thing? No. So I'm saying is like, you got to have purpose. You have to have intention and we have to have external load. If it's two and a half and threes and fives and seven and a half, then so be it. Start there and work your way up, but you got to have load. If your intention is to get stronger, build stronger bones, get more muscle, more any of that, any of those things, which everybody's goal should be. Remember, I have yet to meet a person that's been overly muscularly developed naturally. There's plenty of bodybuilders I look out there and I go, you're a little too big, bro. But again, we're talking about 1% of the 1% of the 1%. For everybody else, for 70% of our population out there, there's no chance you're going to get more muscular. Too muscular, there's zero chance of that. So that's not a concern. The concern should be, I'm not strong enough. If I trip, if I stumble, I'm not strong enough to stop my body weight from falling and rescue this fall because a fall typically ends with a catastrophic injury. If you're over 55 or 60 and those catastrophic injuries, you have a 70% chance of not 
returning to full function. Everybody hear that? You have a 70% chance of not returning to full function. And we're talking about the basic functions that most of our folks are doing. Go to the bathroom, walk around, sit down. Go to the bathroom, walk around, sit down. Anyway, I'm ranting at this point. I hope you got something from this. I hope you learned a little something from it. Comments or questions, hit me up down below. Please continue to fight your good fight against sarcopenia. I love and appreciate all of you. Thank you for everybody with all the support out there, uh, recent events, my dad passing away. I appreciate all the messages. I love and appreciate it very much so. I hope you're all good and I hope this message gets out there to all of you. Go lift weights, get strong, reduce your opportunities and your risk of falling and keep yourself as capable and able as you can for as long as possible. Improve your quality of life. Much love, peace.